Hello, everyone, and welcome to the fifth episode of the All Atlantic Talks podcast, an initiative supported by the European Commission with the Anchor, CSA, and Present, a showcase of interviews together with representatives and experts of the All Atlantic community addressing key priorities and challenges of the Alliance. Today, we will talk about transatlantic information and data sharing in the all Atlantic space. My name is Carlo Cauti. I'm a journalist and I have the pleasure and the honor to present this podcast with my guest today, Dr. Olga Sato, physical oceanographer at University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. Welcome, doctor. Hi, Carlo. Thank you very much for the invitation. Um, it's a big pleasure for me to be here and try to present our initiative to improve data sharing. Thank you. Pleasure. All hours. So uh, we also have Dr. Tina Dona, data manager at Pangea Data Publisher at Marum Institute of the University of Bremen in Germany. Welcome, Dr. Dona. Hello, Carlo. Thank you very much for having me here. And I look forward to our discussion around data sharing and information sharing across the Atlantic. Thank you very much. It's also a pleasure to have you here. And we also have Dr. Otman de Kaki. He's a PhD student at the Rabat Faculty of Science and All Atlantic Ocean Youth Ambassador in Morocco. Welcome, Dr. de Kaki. Thank you, Carlo. And I'll be happy to show and to showcase the interest of youth in data management and data in general. Thank you. Thank you very much. So let's talk about the transatlantic information and data sharing in the old Atlantic space. I will start with Dr. Sato, starting with the first question, and we'll put the same question to all our guests. So Dr. Sato, which is the importance of international cooperation targeted to information and data sharing in the Atlantic Ocean? Dr. Sato, please, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. It's a nice question. First of all, I would like to put a little bit on my knowledge as being a scientist as a background. It's important that, you know, we have been working, you know, as scientists, we have working with, you know, many subjects around the world, especially for us, uh, which are involved in the ocean sciences. The scientists have their own objectives, okay? So I have my own uh, research interests. And then I basically go and try to get data and study that, get some uh, analysis, and then I write my paper, publish, and then I have the data. The data is available. And this will happen to many other uh, scientists around the world. So one thing that it's important to know that the data have many multiple uses. So the data that was uh, were very important for me for some specific objective can be used by other scientists. So let me give you a, a, a simple example, for instance, like now that uh, something that I'm really interested in is this um, in the climate uh, change scenario that we, uh, we are studying and then we live. And then many of the, the scientists have a very long time series. And this time series of important data are scattered in, in some computer around the world. And then what if we can get all this data together so we have something that we can have a better idea of how this uh, scenario will change in different parts of the world. So this is one thing that it's important for us to understand. So the access to different kinds of data will uh, help us to have a better view of a, a big picture of something that we are studying. Another example that I can give you, like people who are working with fisheries or harmful algal bloom, for instance. Okay, so... This could be some example specific for each corner of the ocean or, uh, or the coastal region, but the data could be specific for a certain place, but the, I, the science, the, the processes, the, the, uh, how do we understand the process, it's, it cannot be so different from region to region. And also people, different uh, understanding will help to uh, study for other people in other places. So this is so important for us to have this exchange of ideas and exchange of strategies and methods. So my point here is that the data connects all. So the data, it's important for us to have the different kind of data so that we have a better understanding. 
And one important thing is we have to uh, learn how to have new uses for the old data. So this knowledge will help us to improve the uh, strategies for the future, the data collection and everything that we can have for the future. So that's the, the big importance for us. So we start to talk, we start to share data. It will help us to better understand, you know, what's going on around the globe. Thank you very much, Dr. Sato. So same question also for our German guest. Uh, Dr. Tina Dona, which is the importance of the international cooperation targeted to information and data sharing in the Atlantic Ocean? Dr. Dona, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Carlo. Maybe I connect to what Olga has been saying about scientists trying to use data from uh, many different sources um, around the Atlantic Ocean to answer big questions, you know, of the role of the, that the ocean plays in, in our climate, in our daily lives, and, and for many other processes in the uh, global climate. So I think that if we look at Europe, which has had a focus on building data infrastructures and sort of advancing the data landscape very actively has thrown a lot of money into this, we can can still say that it's in the end not that advanced yet. It's uh, we're putting a lot of effort in and starting a lot of conversations. There are national data infrastructures being developed because there's uh, sort of the realization that we need to have long-term funding for these type of activities. There's still a lot of disconnect. There's a lot of data which is not interoperable. So people record data in different formats or describe them in different ways. So uh, maybe scientists aren't even sure if uh, if they can bring these different data sources together and still get a reliable answer to their question. And so this is something that's happening within Europe. And of course, uh, looking at the Atlantic and other, the global ocean landscape, basically, it's the place where we have to start now to agree on ways how we collect data, how we store data, how do we describe the data so that it's really possible for researchers to come later and look at these time series and decide if they can integrate it with other data sets they may have from other sources. I think this international cooperation is absolutely key to uh, increasing the impact of data for all the, the members around the Atlantic. And it's something we need to start now or else in 10 years where we have maybe the tools and services to analyze this data, we're going to have to clean everything up first because that's something that wasn't thought of uh, or it wasn't talked about, wasn't coordinated. It's just a lot of uh, people working with people and something that Anchor Project is really pushing and also is part of the sister projects um, uh, like iAtlantic but that I work for. So if we're looking at maybe someday creating a digital twin ocean for the Atlantic Ocean or for other oceans, which, which is a great concept that we can model developments into the future based on all the data we're continuously feeding into the system, this really will take a lot of effort to align all these data sources. And in many areas, data infrastructure develop is really in its infancy. And this is somewhere also where um, there's a great potential for, for knowledge transfer. A lot of these things are very easy to transfer, actually, <laughs> because, you know, they're digital information things that is not about building a house or something, but it's um, about passing on workflows um, or formats that are used, structures within the data infrastructure. So there's really a great potential to sort of shortcut a lot of things that we needed a long time to develop in, in Europe and to, you know, work together moving forward to make sure we don't have to clean up a lot of things in the future and we can help each other with this consorted growth. I think that's what I wanted to say for, to this question. Thank you very much, Dr. Dona. So the same question also for Dr. Dekaki. Doctor, which is the importance of international cooperation targeted to information and data sharing in the Atlantic Ocean? Doctor, the floor is yours. Thank you. So the question is thinking about the question was a very complex structure. First of all, to think about international cooperation, we should have a national background. You cannot see the international subset without leading the national set. So uh, the second part of the question was info and data sharing. And as part of my teaching duties at the university, it's explaining to people what data is. And it should be something that we should put forward 
it it show what data sharing and what information means. So an example I could give easily is a color. So a color is set of information that our eyes get from the reflection of the light on an object. And if you see it as a blue, that means the information you got is blue. But at many times it happens to us in real life, someone else will see the same object and tell you a different color from what you see. And that is like crossing your information and just setting that what you've seen, the data you've received, might not be seen the same way as others. So this might be uh, showing that you need to see what other people see. And this, what we mean about international cooperation, is having your own data, but also having the other people's data and comparing it to having a more general view. And it's always, and a second example I always give to my student is the drinks or beverages. I say the drink or beverages might have a color, taste, and other shapes, etc. But two drinks that have the same color does not mean they are equal. That means they might have different tastes, etc. So by having a little bit of deep dive into data, understanding it, comparing it to other data given by other people, you might have a better knowledge and a better information about data. And then you can start an international cooperation or just a cooper national cooperation, local cooperation about with different structures, sharing data, uh, having a common sense that data is accessible for everyone. And that data is just a set of information that we need to study, not dependent on the goal of study, just to study to understand better. And as part of my studies, which mean I'm looking at data and studying data, perhaps the international collaboration for students is to have more accessible data in sharing data. And this is what international cooperation should target. It targets that data is for all. It's one ocean, different views, but the same data. Crossing our data together, checking it, knowing what we feel, what we want to have, and by having different data or just like sharing your data with other people, you might have a better understanding of some anomaly in your data. And you might have an help from other person that have already studied that set of data you have and knows better information, knows secrets, tips that you don't have. So international collaboration shouldn't be the first thing we should go for. It should be the end result. It should be like the a surprise or something that we should fancy having. But at start, we should have a local strategy, a national strategy, and then move forward for an international strategy of having data, comparing data and information. And this is where anchors come from. It's, it's about having all those sets of national collaborators and local collaborators, and then moving to a bigger stage. Like today, we have in different nationalities to a move into an international stage where we can have a, a space where we can study our data, share our data, because it is our data. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Dekaki. So I would like to start with you, Dr. Stay with us, because I'd like to ask a second question, then we continue with our other two guests. Dr. Dekaki, share the concrete examples of actions and activities being implemented in this framework. Please, doctor. One of, one of the activities I'm doing at the university is actually um, having little books of data to little kids because there is no age to start to understand what data is. It's not until you need data that you go and seek it. It's as early as when you enter school, you should have little booklets about data that understand that the word data is a complex and fancy word that is hidden between information. And one of these implementation is getting people access to this set of information, uh, letting them know what we want from our data. And that uh, huge uh, question that's now in our day and age is asked is the privacy of data. Some data are private, some data is are public, and you should know the difference between those two things. So one of the main activities we do is just 
giving the floor to the kids, giving the floor to the local communities to debate and understand and have a better understanding about the notion of data, about the notion of implementing data and about uh, just the meaning of it. A second place is to have an interaction, a local universities in Morocco, which are that we have a connection between our universities and sharing data together. So if a university A works on a project in the C, it might lead to sharing the data with the university B to just cross check different parameters, etc., to have a better understanding. I mean, one, one hand cannot do a lot, but two hands can do better. This is what we come to for global and local collaboration. One of the actions I love to do, and it's something that I do on my own personal time, as also in the university, is giving the floor to leaders and local communities and professors at the university to come and speak with little kids, youth, uh, people who need help in decision-making, just to have a little chat like we have today, to give them like the better tips and tools about what's data and how we can implement it. And these actions lead to that youth are more interested in knowing what data is and knows a lot about things in, and I mean, kids can ask a lot of questions, but when you just give them someone who knows the answer or typically know the way to hack to the answer, they will just give you enormous and magnificent things. So, I mean, we should seek, and one of the things I said, we have local activities, the one between schools, people who are in the decision-making process towards kids, but also we need like a more general form, like uh, one of the things I wish we will have uh, soon in the upcoming years. It's a platform for the education about data to little kids from different parts of the old Atlantic Basa. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Dekaki. So same question now with Dr. Dona. Dr. Dona, same question to you about the concrete examples of actions and activities being implemented in this framework. Please, Dr. Dona, the floor is yours. Thank you. I guess for, for Pangea, which is a data uh, publisher for earth and environmental data, where I work as a data manager, um, we have a great effort in, in bringing in data from around the world and putting it into the standardized formats so that data becomes interoperable. I guess one of the ways that we try to connect to in this more international framework is that we share our data through global platforms. Of course, the European ones like Imodnet, for example, but also uh, we have identified the uh, GEOS portal as one of the data spaces, sort of a global data space, which can help us bring, bring this international cooperation on an operative level. And the GEOS uh, portal is a data space which provides data from very, very large number of uh, data providers around the world um, who make their data or the description of their data, so the metadata, available through the portal. And we focus on GEOS because it's based, it's an output of the GEO group. And uh, GEO is a, a group of nations, which encompasses almost all nations, <laughs> um, which has, which originally focused uh, mainly on, um, on Earth observations from space. And then it became clear that uh, sort of ground truthing data would be a benefit to have. And from there, it has expanded to all data types. So as part of, uh, of our activities in the All Atlantic call, we've created an All Atlantic data space specific community within this GEOS portal. And uh, our activities focus around connecting the other data providers around the Atlantic who are not yet data, data providers to GEOS to this portal in one to uh, increase the visibility of mainly the South Atlantic data, which is so dearly needed and often present but not visible to others. And also to use this as a development uh, workflow 
to create ways or to create incentives for data infrastructures to advance their te technical capabilities so that they can connect to portals like the GEOS portal, which is of course not the only one. It's just one that we chose because it has no national affiliation. And we thought that this would be a very high level way to work together. And is actually um, supported and funded through this group of nations in the GEO group. That's one of the things we do on another level. We work with concrete data infrastructure partners within our project with South Africa, for example, who can unfortunately not be here to today, but is of course part of this development and uh, our Brazilian partners, where we actually talk as data infrastructures to each other and uh, talk about um, standards we use, about rules for archiving, sharing improvements um, that we've implemented around persistent identifiers and anything that can work towards open and fair data. So this is sort of the two levels we're working on. One, directly with our partners that we already know about, and then created a cooperation node through this GEOS All Atlantic data space uh, to try to encourage others to join this community and to start working together to see how we can make our data more interoperable and share it through these platforms for the researchers out there that need the data. Thank you very much, Carlo. Thank you, Dr. Donna. So same question also to Dr. Sato, same question about these concrete examples of actions and activities being implemented in this framework. Please, Dr. Sato. I think Tina already gave a very nice overview of a lot of activities that we are doing on this uh, in our work group. And just put it a little bit on in the context, I think, uh, first of all, we have something that we have been following, which is called the Belém Statement, which is a, a set of, you know, activities that we are trying to do in order to make uh, the Atlantic a better known ocean. And on the idea that we are trying to connect you know, the knowledge and infrastructures from the north and the south and know what, you know, we can exchange between the west and the east. So it's try to, trying to uh, get a, a better connection uh, of the countries around the Atlantic Ocean. So in order to, in order to do that, uh, we have assembled an incredible group of uh, people called the experts. So we can talk about the data, not only the data, but a little bit of science, how do we get the data? So these are actions that we already been doing you know, for the last two years. And one of the, the our objectives is try to, you know, try to know what we are, we already have, it. Tina already said that. So what are the data sources? What are the infrastructures that are in different countries in the Atlantic Ocean, around the Atlantic Ocean? And then try to get, you know, the synergies, the important thing is uh, we, are, we, we, we say that a lot. We don't want to uh, reinvent the wheel, you know. So we are trying to uh, improve or implement from what we already have in place and try to get, you know, uh, use this, the infrastructures. For instance, we, when we wanted to uh, exchange data, they have to be in a certain form. There are some protocols that we have to uh, define. We don't have to reinvent these protocols. Some very smart people already did that. So the idea is to try to, you know, get a, to a common place and say, okay, so which one are we going to use from now on? Okay, so we have to convince the scientists or the data centers uh, in these countries, like in Brazil. So, okay, so we're going to use this protocol. We have to put everything together. So. This kind of talk that it's already, uh, we are, are trying to get to people to um, make sure that we are thinking about that in order to, you know, at the end of this enterprise here, we have something that we are going to call the All Atlantic Ocean Data Space. So in order to, to do that, so we have synergies with these um, big projects, especially in Europe, um, in the US, uh, so uh, in North Atlantic. So we, we are uh, trying to get the synergy with this uh, big projects that already are, are going on. And also to, to make everybody to understand and to know each other, 
We are promoting a series of webinars and workshops last year and this year, and we are, we are going to have a, a workshop in Brazil and another workshop in South Africa. So it's important uh, to know that they are a big part of this uh, enterprise. And then at the end of this Anchor project, in our work group, we are uh, trying to get a roadmap for developing this all Atlantic Ocean data space. So all the activities, the actions, concrete actions we are, that we are uh, doing right now, it's basically to know what we have, you know, to talk to everybody who's involved, to make more people to get interest on this initiative, but which, you know, at the end of the decade of the ocean, we wanted to have something uh, as a concrete as at this ocean data space. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Sato. So, unfortunately, our time is over. I will have a lot, several other questions here to our guests, but I would like to thank you very much, Dr. Olga Sato, physical oceanographer at University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. Thank you very much for your participation to our podcast. Thank you very much, Carlo, and I enjoyed very much to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our pleasure to have you here. And also, thank you very much to Dr. Tina Dona, a data manager at Panagea Data Publisher at Marum Institute at University of Bremen in Germany. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you, Carlo, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak here to this topic that I'm very passionate about, and I hope that we make some progress on international cooperation. Uh, yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you very much. And also, thank you very much to Dr. Othman de Kaki, PhD student at the Rabat Faculty of Science and All Atlantic Ocean Youth Ambassador. Thank you very much, Dr. De Kaki, to be here. Thank you, Carlo, and thank you for giving me this opportunity to be with such amazing scientists. And thank you so much for this opportunity to the voice of youth. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure for us. And thank you very much to you that are listening our podcast. Remember, all, all the podcasts are on our channel on YouTube and also on Spotify. You can find it uh, directly on your cell phone, iOS or Android. And thank you very much also for our to our peer commission and, and to Anchor to support this initiative. So see you at the next All Atlantic Talk podcast. Thank you very much once again. See you soon.